Should you use mono repos or even better, should you switch from poly repo or multi repo type of repositories to a single repository for everything? Or does it have to be for everything? So let's explore mono repos and see whether you should use them and if you should use them under which circumstances they are a good choice. So what is a mono repo? It is a single repository that contains multiple projects. So you combine multiple repositories into a single repository and you get mono repo, more or less. Before we start exploring mono repos, let's see who is using them, who is jumping on a train or who is already using mono repos and why is that so tempting? I mean, the answer to why is that so tempting is very easy because Netflix, Google, Uber, Facebook, the giants of software industry are using mono repos. So therefore, you should be using them as well. You should be like Google, right? The fact that Google, for example, is using monorepos does not necessarily mean that you can be like Google. Or maybe you can, maybe you could, who knows, let's, let's explore that. The main advantages of monorepos is that it is easier collaboration, because everything is in a single repo, so everybody has everything in one place. And then everybody can collaborate with everybody else. That's a good advantage, isn't it? Dependency management is simplified because, again, you can easily use a dependency that is in the same repository even though that dependency might be built separately or live separate life from your application. Still, it is all in one place, including dependencies, so the dependency management is simplified. And then there is refactoring. Refactoring is easier as well, because if you want to refactor something across multiple projects, across the whole system, having everything in one repo and everything in one file system is almost certainly easier. Or maybe it's not. Now let's go back and discuss each of those advantages in a bit more detail. Easier collaboration. Of course, obviously, it is easier to collaborate if everything is in a single repository. One of the big obstacles in collaboration is not that everything is not in mono repo and that everything is split into multiple repositories, but that the access to all those repositories is not free to every single person working in a company. We tend to use our back so that we restrict access to people depending on which repository they should and which repositories they shouldn't use. And the key here is to enable for everybody to have access to everything. And if you do that, whether everything is in a single repo or multiple repositories is not that big of a difference. Of course, collaboration is easier if you clone one repository instead of cloning multiple repositories, but it's not such big of a difference. And that simplified collaboration through mono repos can easily become actually more complicated because having everything in one place can complicate the search and discovery of what you want because maybe you're not really concerned with millions and millions of lines of other people's projects, but only in a few that you do want to collaborate with. Similarly, searching within a file system on your laptop is definitely easier and that's where Monorepo shines. But let's face it, searching across multiple repositories is not that hard either. You can go to GitHub or GitLab and search within an organization and you're going to find what you need. The additional step with multi-repo combination is that you need to clone the repository you want to collaborate instead of that already being cloned for you. But apart from that, search and discovery is more or less the same, except that you need to search usually through a web UI instead of your local file system. Now, if we jump to the second point, which is simplified dependency management, that is indeed true. It is easier to manage dependencies without any, let's say, real dependency management. So if everything is in the same repo, you don't need to store your dependencies in Artifactory or whichever registry you store them in. They're all in the code and you can just uh, import link, do whatever you need to do without real dependency management. So that is definitely easier. However, that also means that whenever a dependency changes, we need to build everything. When we use mono repo and single dependency changes, we need to build all the projects and that can take hours, sometimes even days. And that is a bad thing. You don't want to build everything when using monorepo or when using polyrepo or multi-repo. 
that's almost never a good idea unless you really, really know how to optimize those things. So when you're using monorepos, you have easier dependency management, but you need to have specialized software that will figure out dependency tree and build only the projects that are related to those dependencies and so on and so forth. That can easily get extremely, extremely complicated. And the last point about making refactoring easier I don't think that's really true. I mean, it is true in some cases. It is true when we have smaller projects or smaller organizations with only a few projects. But imagine if you have tens or hundreds or thousands of projects, you're not going to refactor the whole system at once. That is never going to happen. And if you do have to refactor many applications at the same time, many projects at the same time, that's usually a smell that the separation is not done well. When we separate our applications well, so that each application or each service or microservice has a clear separation of concerns, refactoring across services is actually not happening. It's not supposed to be happening, at least not frequently. If you have many projects which you continuously refactor all across the board, across the whole system, that is usually a bad sign. That means that you're more likely having a distributed monolith and not microservices as applications with clear boundaries and deployable and buildable and what's or not independently from each other. When you need to refactor across the system, that probably means that you have tight coupling. And tight coupling is an enemy of microservices. Microservices are all about loosely coupled applications that are independent from each other. And if you add APIs on top of that, APIs are supposed to be versioned. We are not supposed to refactor all the applications that use an API whenever that API changes. APIs are supposed to be backwards compatible. We change an API, we push it to production, and then the rest of the applications catch up whenever they want because they can still continue using the older version until they're ready to jump ahead and reap the benefits of a new version of an API. APIs are supposed to be versioned so you do not refactor all the applications that use an API whenever the API changes. That's just silly. So those were the main benefits and each of them has already some downsides. On top of the potential benefits like easier collaboration, simplified dependency management and easier refactoring, there are quite a few potential downsides of using monorepos. So let's go through them. Cloning a huge repository can be very, very slow, extremely slow. Imagine millions and millions of lines of code and an infinite history of the whole system packed together, and then you need to clone that, and you need to pull changes which are frequent and happening all the time across the whole system. That is going to be very slow unless you are a small organization. And those problems existed and still exist in a way in Google, Netflix, Uber, and so on and so forth. They can solve the problem by putting extra hardware, extra file systems, and what's or not, a lot of effort into solving that. And that effort might be worthwhile, but the question is whether you are willing to put the effort to solve that problem and many others that I am about to talk about. The second issue is that monorepos encourage tight coupling. They almost invite us to tightly couple our applications. And that's not necessarily a problem as long as you're capable of avoiding the temptation. And temptation is going to be huge. You cannot have unexperienced engineers in your team because they're going to mess it up. They're going to tightly couple applications without even knowing. And then we have issues with pipelines. If you have multiple repositories, creating pipelines is relatively straightforward. We trigger a pipeline whenever there is a change in one of the repositories and then that pipeline does whatever needs to be done. It builds artifacts, it pushes them to some registry, it runs tests, it deploys somewhere and so on and so forth. But if you're using monorepo, then that pipeline is not that easy. Pipeline itself needs to figure out, okay, so what do I need to build? What do I need to test? I'm not going to build everything and I'm not going to test everything whenever somebody makes changes to a monorepo because that would just be insane. That would be too much 
for the system to handle and that would be too slow. So your pipelines need to figure out what changed and what should be triggered as a result of that change and what should be built and what should not be built. And it cannot be as simple as saying, hey, if there is a change to this directory, then this is what I should build because you need to go through dependencies as well. You need to figure out dependency management. You need to figure out what should be built what should be tested and so on and so forth. It gets hard, it gets complicated. And then we have the issue with pull requests. What do you do when a pull request is created? How do you know whether you should review a pull request and who should review the pull request? Because there is a lot of noise. Hundreds of people are making pull requests all to the same repository. And it is very hard to figure out who should review that pull request, who should merge that pull request. Because even if you say, hey, everybody should be able to review and merge pull requests, which would be a good idea, still, you do not know who is interested in what, because a pull request can be a suggested change to any part of the system, and it is almost certain that not everybody is equally interested in any part of the system, and everybody is going to review everything and so on and so forth. So you need to figure out how you are going to distribute the work of reviewing and merging pull requests when there is no separation between different repositories. Everything is together. And that problem with uh, pull requests popping up uh, throughout the whole system and everybody getting all the notifications means that monorepos introduce a lot of noise. You cannot just say, I want those notifications and I don't want those notifications. You're either going to be notified about all the changes in the whole system or you're not going to get notified about any changes. So you are either in the dark or you're saturated with too much noise. And then we have a problem of a broken master. When something goes wrong in production, we know that we have a broken master. Or when tests are failing, even before getting to production, we have a broken master. And that means that the whole system is blocked. Nobody can do anything in the system. Nobody should be able to push anything to the master. And remember, there is a single master for everybody in an organization until that issue is solved. So a single team can easily bring the whole organization to a halt until their issue is resolved. Now, none of those problems has to be a problem. I just wanted to make sure that they could be potential problems. They're all solvable, but they're not as easy to solve as problems we have with multi-repos. So you can resolve those issues. You can resolve the problems with monorepos and reap the benefits, but be ready to invest time and money and potentially hardware in solving those issues. Be ready to change the tools you're using. You will need specialized tools to build. You will need specialized tools to deploy. You will need specialized tools to figure out who did what and who should review what and so on and so forth. You might need to change a lot of the tooling you have right now in your processes, in your system. I try to discourage you from using monorepos, but the reality is that monorepos are great. They are really, really good as long as you have high maturity of your teams, if your people know what they're doing and you're willing to invest in monorepos. It is not enough to just say, hey, I'm going to combine all the repositories into one repository. That is not going to work. Also, bear in mind that there is nothing wrong in combining multi-repos and monorepos. You do not have to have one monorepo for all the projects you have in your organization. A good example and a very common example is to use multi-repos or polyrepos for your applications or some of your applications and then monorepo for some other applications that uh, need that uh, dependency management and tighter coupling, let's say, maybe a distributed monolith and finally use one big monorepo for all your infrastructure needs. What I'm really trying to say is that it is not black and white. You can have multi-repos and monorepos and you can combine them. Finally, before you jump ahead and just go and move everything to monorepos, ask yourself, what is the problem you're trying to solve? If you truly know what the problem is and you can solve that problem with monorepos, go ahead and do it. Move everything to a single monorepo or use multiple monorepos or combine them with multi-repo and monorepos and so on and so forth. As long as you know what the problem is that you're trying to solve, 
Monorepos can be just as good solution as anything else. And remember, the fact that Google is doing something does not mean that you should be doing that something and that you can do that something.